Hello and welcome all. I'm your not so humble game master TJ, and this is Dice of Ages, presenting Cresswell and the Argent Flame, episode 73. Don't be suspicious. Uh, with <laughs> with that, let's get into the uh, recap of the previous episode. Argus sends a message off to his father, confirming his family's safety and intent to head to the capital of the Protectorate, as Twig and Shikar swarm and cling to the confused dwarf. Eventually, the Firebeard son sends to Emrys, receiving back one side of a worrying conversation. Pinjack hands over a Steercrag council brooch before Tresheni attempts to copy the glyph into her notes, while others retrieve the reluctant Armand Mortanic from his temple, from the temple. The head of the Mortanic spits the Mortanic clan spits the address of the council's glyph into the Ma'itan's book before sending them to Thulmor Bed, arriving within the Ferris archives. The party convince the staff to let them pass without record as they quickly make their way to Gizmo's home. In the backwaters of the capital of the Razor Fang, a dangerous welcome awaits the wayward gnome. A Dorkenan Rai in pink armor, supposedly Tiffany, stands over an iteration of the host as powerful a uh, powerful spell nears its completion. The gang's blade dancer attempts to interrupt the spell, but it proves to be overwhelming, ushering the rise of the previously felled Sasha. Tiffany is determined to extract the location of Shade from the Argent Flame as they engage in pitched battle. The Dorkenan duo prove extremely deadly as laws of nature, magic, and physics are broken without a thought. The present host sacrifices himself in an attempt to aid the party, and several attempts are made by Tiffany to teleport away. Argus enters a frenzy of flame before the assassins finally fall. Welcome back to Crest Valen. Okay, hello, welcome back, Dice of Ages, not so humble game master TJ, Crest Valen, Argent Flame, a lot of stuff happening. Um, we're gonna move to some of this other music here. Killed uh, the killers. <laughs> so, yeah, so uh, even though we're not technically in combat anymore, however, we're still in initiative because one of your comrades is in something called a fire frenzy. Uh, and the bodies. <laughs> are still laying there. Okay, so um, we're not, I don't think, actually, so here's the deal. I actually don't want to do it in initiative order because that would take forever. So we're going to go around and actually, um, we're going to skip ahead actually to Argus's turn because I think once uh, the, the threats actually die down, everybody kind of relaxes from their combat state and just lets whatever the next impetus of action would happen. So Argus, what are you doing? I'm going to cast Wall of Fire. And I'm going to surround Europe, Europe, Yorick, burn through the Tiffany's body and back down through the Terrazin. Okay. Um, sure. Cool. So Yorick needs to roll dexterity saving throw. Um, Tiffany's body becomes partially engulfed in flame. Let's find pull this down here. <laughs> Yorick fails. <laughs> New York fails hard. Yeah. With your day. <laughs> Which just means you uh, suck. <laughs> you're, you're not wrong. So he takes 26 fire damage this turn. York does? Yeah. Is he still up? He is. He didn't take any damage. Okay. And then so, he, I'm going to run over and in the burning flames of Tiffany's body try to take her soul. <laughs> you broke you broke the GM. You broke the game master. I I don't know what to do. I have, oh, shit. I have a contingency plan for you if You do? Yeah. You gave us these abilities. Yeah. <laughs> I can't take the other one. Okay, okay, She's okay. Dead. Yeah, 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 She's yeah, yeah. So um you're you're making it so the fire isn't in a part of her body so that you can get to her, right? Are you stopping the fire? No, I'm gonna go in the fire and Pull it out while he's burning. On okay, you've got to do it. To, no, he's just not. He's not re I, immune to fire. I, You're resistant. I'm to resistant. It. To he's fire. in a frenzy. Yeah, so go ahead. Too. You still have to roll a dexterity saving throw against your own spell. Yes, then. I do. Yeah. Technically, I, causing fire damage to yourself correct. counts to the thing because it's still it says to a creature. Yeah, I'm already past the. But it doesn't limit, fucking matter, but, right? Exactly. Um, I <laughs> succeeded. I got a 19. So you take a quarter of this. <laughs> oh gosh, that was. Almost max damage. Um, <laughs> uh, God, why can't I not math right now? Because you're on the spot. 
you're burning. <laughs> you're in a frenzy. Do you have barbarian? 30... Moment, so that's all right. 31 damage halved? Well, 31 have it halved and then halved again. So seven. Because you took quarter, quarter. resistance oh, right, right. and you succeeded right. on your save. So, seven, so it's not 15, seven? it is 7. Okay. Yeah. Take 7 but points of fire damage. You're concentrating on that wall of fire. Right. So roll your concentration check. This is ridiculous. I failed it. So okay, so you're fucked. This is so stupid. <laughs> so the firewall drops. So the firewall drops. Okay. Yeah. Um, but you're still in your frenzy. Yes, but I'm And you are a soul. doing a soul thing. Yeah. Didn't didn't you try doing that before and like they sensed it? Argus. <laughs> Hello. Argus is yeah, not. Yeah, this is so no, he's not fun. home right now. He's checked out. Go ahead, would you here. roll? Guys. Uh, dirty 20. Dirty. You're shitting. I rolled a 13 plus 7. <laughs> <laughs> I like I'm not I'm not acting this I'm I'm genuinely, genuinely fucking frustrated I would like I'm not like frustrated it's just like I can't, this, this the the odds they don't make any fucking sense that you would be able to okay <laughs> he played so the low the, odds so and lost the here that's what he's telling us the soul you begin to hammer at this individual that is like burning and still singeing the body is still mostly intact like the legs are pretty much have, started to cauterize and flesh and snapping and crackling and popping and you smell the, the scent of something cooking. It smells like pig or roast. Um, we know what burn bodies smell. One of the things yeah, that we do. Yeah. The, the part that you're kind of, you're getting very close to this body is unconscious. Wrong, part of its armor has been removed. As far as you can tell, this looks mostly like a humanoid body. Tiffany's body looks mostly human, if you could tell it. But it, like at the at the very most, perhaps half-elven, but mostly human. It's hard to tell because so many things have actually been changed. One of the things you're understanding is that as you try to hammer down on the shell of her that protects her 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 soul in the etherealness that is like, you know, a soul prison or whatever, uh, uh, the, you understand this is, this is wrong. Not what you're doing, but what is her this is is it's creature abnormal it's it's not natural she appears to be what you can kind of tell just from the her soul appears to be malformed and mutated uh, like just along a a reflection of her body her body has been forcibly evolved mutated changed experimented on in order to become what it is now um and her soul in kind feels the same way. The interesting thing that you feel, you feel an extreme amount of resistance from this soul to be to be removed from this body, almost like part of her anatomy and her, her evolution, her genetics and her mutation of this body has been something that has caused the soul to not leave even when you die. Stay with them so that they can be revived a lot easier and you are trying to wrench that from a cage in a prison that has been biologically built within this person's uh, form. What? I see what he's doing. I want to act as his assistant. Do, do you see that he created a firewall and started hammering on a body that it ran up to? You can't see past the firewall. I mean, the firewall is gone. But I see the firewall dropped, and I see him hammering. Oh, uh, yes, obviously. I want to be... <laughs> yes. His forge assistant, and I want to f pump the bellows. I want to fan the flame. That heat metal surge. Yeah, technically, heat metal is still going on. There's still, like you are, yeah. you are. So I'm essentially you, you remember the last melting the armor onto the body. I'm adding heat to the situation, hoping but to help him do what he's doing. Super fucking cool. This is awesome. <laughs> I, I will. I do. I, I want to say to you guys, you do feel. Um, especially you, Argus, something similar as what you felt before when you were like blood bonded with an individual and you took as much damage as they did, if not twice as much. You do feel that bond starting to form, like the soul is kind of latching onto you. Um, it, it, you get this kind of sense with your passive insight that hey, if I'm going down, I'm taking you with me. Like it, it's, it, is, it is fighting you pretty much saying, if you're gonna take me and put me and capture me, I'm gonna take your soul too and I'm gonna put you in here too. Uh, and you are fighting that. So we're going to do a contest here. This is a straight luck check contest. It has to do um, with your 
this is not something you've ever actually been able to experience before in this vernacular. I did take one dokenerized soul before. You, mm-hmm. uh-huh. you did, you did, you did. It was not, it was, <coughs> this, it was that Sasha. was, that was Sasha's, which is why she came back without a soul. Um, which is why the only, the only person that could bring her back was Emrys. Was Emrys. You guys are putting the puzzle pieces <laughs> together. Yeah, it feels good, doesn't it? Um, uh, exactly. Which is why Emrys was one. Why oh, Emrys was told. sought out by Tiffany in order to bring out one of those people because Pernua doesn't really have a soul, even though she has everything else that she has. Um, so, yes, you can. This is a possibility. This soul is, Sasha's soul was one thing. Tiffany's soul is another. There is, there is a difference between the Dorkan and Rai and the way they have been mutated. Each of them has been mutated in a different way in order to make sure, which is why you've seen them have different abilities. They have different magic items. Um, you've seen Sasha been able to man- manipulate magic. You, this... Tiffany is, is a master of poison, super fast. And it sh- you don't know this because you've never actually been able to experience it, but like her charisma and her actual uh, tie to herself, she's she's considered one of the more. This is out of game, but she's considered one of the more immortal Dorkan and Rai because she can just keep coming back. Uh, even no matter how many times she's died, she can just keep coming back. They can revive her a lot easier because that was built into when she was mutated, is making it super easy to revive her even when she fully, fully dies. So what if I am planning on releasing her soul marks to to the Great Flame right away? I'm not I planning mean, on trying one way to, to find out. Because okay. um, I'm not trying to technically capture. I'm trying to send her. You to don't the great think this soul entirely knows what it is you intend to do with okay. it? One, you wrench from it, but it says whatever you're doing with it, I'm taking you with me. Okay. Um, now, if you put your own soul into the great flame, uh, I mean that's where your soul is now. So if that's if that's what's going to happen, it's it's not no longer in your body. It's yeah. not where it is. It's not like the Great Flames can just be like, oh, we'll just put you back where you belong. That's not what they do. They don't restore. They burn. Right. They consume. The and you just realize that pretty quickly. You're also still in your fire frenzy, so I doubt this type I'm paying of... attention. Yeah. I thought. doubt this type of deep thought is really something that's occurring right. to you. You're more of just acting on impulse and instinct of like, ah, fire! Um, because <laughs> the actual... The personification of the consumed flame is the one that's taken the front seat and your logical, um, definitive right. brain has taken a back And I'm sure Burn. burning soul. someone else's soul is a part of what they would want to. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it would make a lot of sense. Yeah. So we're going to do a luck check here. We're going to do a contested okay. luck check. Just rollies. Gosh, because I roll so well. <laughs> <laughs> Six. Two. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gosh. So here's the deal. The soul comes out. You pull the soul out. Well, first I need to you to roll uh, your... Well, no, you did it I already. Did. You I did got, it already. Got you 20. got a 20. Yeah. You do a roll with it. The soul comes out. The soul is attempting to wrench your soul from you at the same time. It does not have advantage on this because you've, fought, you've won the first... Uh, the the first battle with it. This is the strongest soul you've ever had to pull from something. The soul does come out. It is so upset with this. And you feel it still trying to push itself back into it. And in fact, trying to bring you into Tiffany's body as well. Uh, so well, I need you to roll a con- contest with this because it is out. It doesn't seem to have the the, the, the uh, velocity yeah. capable of pulling you into there now. But so now it's just trying to pull you out as a part of it. So go ahead and roll a wisdom saving throw for me. Twenty. You seem to be holding your own with this soul. Uh, it is you. Your heating of the body start to deteriorate the body where it starts to catch flames and catch fire. Uh, the soul is, for the moment, at least in this very moment, at your mercy. As you're still within your frenzy. Pump in the bellows. Uh, I'm going to send it off to the Great Flame. Okay. Burn it. As you send it off to Great Flame, it's going to make one last attempt to try to take you with it. Roll another wisdom saving throw. Twelve plus five. Flash, Flash of genius. 
So 17. Get the f- <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I was going to be like, whole new side quest arc. Get fucking Argus' soul from the Great Flame. Um, wow. A, Just with that, you're like, ah, no reaction. Come back from the Great Flame. Right. Um, you uh, incinerate the soul. The, you, this is interesting because you incinerate the soul over this glowing body that is nothing but orange and red colors now. The fla- the soul shakes like a meteor that's that's sh- trying to enter the atmosphere. Cracks begin to appear along it. You hear a scream. Just all of your ears, whether you're actually close to it or not, it's just as loud as this soul breaks apart and just lets out this absolutely terrifying scream. Log and Cole, I need you to roll wisdom saving throws for me. Them. <laughs> hey, I'm, okay. I'm yeah. your little forge buddy. Yeah. So. yeah. 12. No, yeah. 12. <laughs> <laughs> Much Seven, better. 17. 17. Um, okay, you, Log, you feel like a little off, but you're okay. Cole, there's something in you just that, that scream that felt like sparked a great hunger. Like, ooh. A soul (laughs) about to be picked and ripened and destroyed and put into the actual, you know, essence of the universe, something raw, something powerful, delicious. It's a fleeting moment, but it's still yum. It's that it's that savor it's that idea of savoring something before you actually bite it, even mm-hmm. then not getting it it's, kind of it's, thing. Mm-hmm. You you also um, become the aware. Cinnabon smell in the moment. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was trying to describe. You are a hundred percent correct. So I will say it's a fleeting moment where you kind of become self aware of it afterward, and the fact that you become self aware of it, you real you realize that there is a part of you that out of your control craves the power of like a a uh, a soul that's been robbed of its will uh, it is something that if should you be in a position to have that that would be something that you would want to for lack of a better term devour um, well, that's scary because I have them often uh, <laughs> <laughs> right because uh, and that was a a great soul. That was like a three soul mark soul that you let uh, out, gone. The body starts to deteriorate very quickly with, uh, if you're keeping the heat yeah, metal yeah. up. I mean, Are you I trying can... to just incinerate this body? Yep. Okay. To ash. And as that goes, my eyes go back to normal. She yep. she burned Oof. my family. She burns. In <laughs> okay. Eventually, yes, she, she burns, burns to nothing but like charred crisps. So, uh, I mean, that's. A f- it's a. It's only a it's, minute. Uh, it's so very Amparu, Uncle Owen and, style. And uh, that's what's all it's like. I'll be like, it. what's yours is yours from the vision. Um, do you feel? I want to say. You feel just a kind of. Just one of those like head back like. Okay, kind of bit. Being like, all right, you're not the the thing I really need to focus on right now. You're doing your job. <laughs> uh, that, kind of, that kind of feeling of, all right, as you were. Um, Tiffany's body is more or less just gone. I mean, what's left of her is very, very little, if anything. It's been about three minutes, correct? Uh, that, that's usually a six-second thing for me to take a soul. You tell us. No. Uh, yeah. We had it as a one turn thing. It's not much him helping and what was going on. But, so uh, eight but, minute, but, maybe? No, yeah, I, maybe, if that. Uh oh. Should we um, move the I was going to. For Facebook the other stop. folks. What? Facebook stopped for some reason. Probably for the one. other folks, is Sasha's body doing anything? Or is it laying there? And should we burn it as well? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Doesn't mean she won't come back as another. Yeah. Cause she's a, like. <laughs> <laughs> well, if she doesn't have a body to come back to, though. It's a revenant. She's gonna p- take the next dead corpse and turn into it. Or we put her in terrazine, and then she can't yeah. do anything. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> but the terrazine's not directed her. her. 
for spirit the might have already left gone yeah. to search for another the next yeah. thing yeah it's been a minute um I would, like I, it doesn't really matter too much um it it didn't take a whole lot of time i don't think it took a minute but it took it took Sometimes. A bit, because this was not something that you just <laughs> pulled out when it was weakened. It was specifically designed to, yes, even with great magic, not be removed. Um, but you have one of the keys that allows those kinds of cages to be unlocked. So it was very upset with it, but didn't really have a choice. <laughs> it is now in the great place. <laughs> <laughs> Start dragging Burning the body over. <laughs> well, last time they were able to track my hammer. Yeah. I think you officially put more people into the Great Flame voluntarily than involuntarily now. Why do you do this? Uh, <laughs> that's debatable. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just counting time limit. I think it may. I don't really understand why it did that. <sighs> you mean, is it worth it for the next half hour? to get it back up. I mean, probably not, because we're going to delete it anyway. So, so we'll figure it out for next time. Yeah. It's okay. Um, Boots, did you find any of your family? We got to go search, right? Uh, at that, yeah, I start going back through the rooms that I didn't spend time on. Um, yeah, I start setting. I start putting out fires as after we're done. Wait, we need to set this body on fire first. That's Throw fine. her in the terrazine. All right, come on. <sighs> Start dragging this giant <laughs> eight <laughs> foot. Help. Thank you. <laughs> like yeah, wall of fire We've established before. The Cole cannot long. help you. <laughs> so Cole's putting out fires in Zebdak's house. Yeah. <laughs> Just put her on top of Tiffany. Argus is walking behind him, starting him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zemdak, you go check on. I will slap you. Uh, I want to look in the other rooms. I wasn't planning on. On my way back that. out of the house, no. I want to check the other bedrooms. Okay. Uh, go ahead, just roll a broad investigation check for me. Eliezer, what is it that you'd like to do? Um, <clears throat> 15. I'll go and look in the other Find rooms as well. Okay. okay. I'll, yeah. I'll just take... You take the rooms opposite of him. I would say that you guys together are able to kind of find a couple things that, you know, are a little more like, ah, oh, this, yeah, keepsakes yeah. and heirlooms, just things that mean more sentimental value that you're able to salvage. Like, uh, there's a, there's a, a half-burned family portrait that appeared, that was uh, drawn up or painted. Uh, there is a blanket that made it kind of way, the way through, a couple wooden tinkering toys, a bunch of the little trinkets that only like half worked when you were growing up that you gave to your siblings and some of the other people that they kept, that some of your other family members that they kept because you made it and you gave it to them and it's like kind of the thing that they, rather than, yeah, carvings. rather than the drawings that, yeah. you, that you would pin up on the fridge, it was like little trinkets that they kind of like lined up on their headboard and a, a, a few of those survived. Um, you grab some of those, you're able to grab um, a mostly untouched, uh, like stuffed doll. Uh, that is that is Lopnels. Um, Emrys is fully Terrazine. Okay, yeah. I'm, yeah. Just, fully, I'm just double checking. <laughs> he fully, fully sacrificed terazine. himself, essentially. Fucker, um, he said we needed to talk. The and, other and, M. Yeah, Emerson is fully terrazined. At least this version of Emerson is right. fully terrazined. Um, Eliezer, I will say you have a little bit of a unique insight into this. You were the one that spent time in the in the secret prison mm -hmm. of the Conclave <clears throat> and got to see a little bit more things about the Dorkan and Rai. You were met by Shade a couple times and talked and tortured a couple of other times and. And you got to see just every once in a while, sometimes you'd see conversations with the two of them. You definitely got the sense that there is, as the rest of you have, but you a little bit more intimately, that there's absolutely some sort of un, 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 undefinable connection between them that, that surpasses distance. Uh, you also know, as you have seen before, when one of them was talking to you and just kind of like looked up as if they sensed something and then said something like, oh, well, you know, Tiffany's in trouble, or Sasha's in trouble, or, or, or th this, is, this has happened, we have to go. Um, immediately, no, and they get a ping immediately when, that, when those types of things happened. Mm. You also realize, you kind of put two and two together, you've just dropped two Torken and Rai, which means whoever, 
you don't know however many other door cannon ride they are, but they all know you just did the, you just you just did that. You also know what happens as you've kind of figured out when that type of thing happens. But they, mm -hmm. uh, they don't. They they're assassins that leave no trace, right? So why would they leave bodies behind? Well, yeah, the shade the shade told us that directly mm -hmm. last yep. time too. Yeah, these these are things that you kind of like putting together and realizing. Uh, you cannot be here for you. You need right, to leave. Say, you uh, need to yeah. leave immediately. Not only do you need to leave, either you need to get rid of these bodies quickly. You're you you already realize you're out of time. You are fully out of time. You are completely out of time. You are on you are in like the breach of seconds where where at any moment armies could be coming down on you from just magically coming through the, the Terran space uh, of, of like you know reality. What's Key that? point, there were no bodies. <laughs> there were no bodies what? In the house. No, there were no bodies in the house. Okay. That you couldn't you didn't see any bodies in the house. It appears that the only family member that you were able to find was the living family of Lobno, meaning that she was probably hiding. Either they were incinerated, disintegrated by magic and, and they did not survive, or they're okay. or they survived and they're not here. Okay. Or they died somewhere else and yep. their bodies are somewhere else. Uh, What'd you guys do with the other body? Did you throw it on the fire? Or right, into some, the terrazine. Yeah, into terrazine, terrazine and, and fighter. Okay, I want to make this very, very clear. You guys are in the process of dragging this body to the terrazine when Eliezer makes it a point that you guys, it's, go. you have to go now. Like, you you don't, you have, you have zero seconds. I vortex warp the body onto the terrazine. We just go. <laughs> We're done, <laughs> you done do dragging this. Yep. Can you I, do that to I an think object? So. Let me, I'll double check. If not, I'll just bonfire it. Okay. okay. <laughs> If that doesn't work, yeah, I, I, you, I mean, the amount of time it'll take a bonfire Another to creature. fully get rid of, a, yeah, you're right. Yeah, so, so I don't think okay. you can vortex warp an object because it's a corpse. So, it's so I'll, just, I'll just bonfire it. Okay, uh, when we drop it. Cool. Let's keep going. Yeah, you guys have to lead. Um, I know these tunnels though, so I can lead them sort of. Absolutely. Out yeah, if you guys want to start to um, do like the sideways shuffle and give yeah, your best, sure. there is no way you're not you're going to be able to get rid of the tracks that you were here, but you can do your best to. Yeah. Try to throw off people. I'll say, you, do me because this is this is all happening very quickly. You guys have no time to think about it. You have to move. Mm -hmm. the, the, okay. the, you you know what's going to happen is that if even one comes out in your current state to come check on this, <clears throat> that's going to be a very difficult time for you. Yeah. And I doubt any of you want to risk that. As no. you, you you got what you what you needed to get here. Uh, Conk is still carrying the barrel with Lopnel in it because mm -hmm. they can move a lot faster than if she's on her feet. Yeah. If she just stays in the barrel, mm -hmm. um, which is totally fine. I um, climb up in on his shoulders and I'm talking down to her. Sure. <laughs> like, What's going on? I found your doll. <clears throat> oh, Tinky. Thank you. Do you know what happened to mom and dad? There was like this big... People started yelling and then somebody really um, banged at the door like really, really hard. And then there was this big loud sound and there was dust everywhere and then you did good hiding in I the just barrel I hid good job and they and then I just kept hiding I'm gonna get you to pin jack okay and he's gonna keep an eye on you where has he been uh he's been in fuck steer car steer car <clears throat> travel really far He's got new gloves. Oh, I like gloves. He uh, he's gotten to be a pretty important person in the church that he joined. Is he a chef? No. Oh, well, then I don't get it. <laughs> he's on a ruling council, but until until we find mom What's and dad. What's a council? Until we find mom and dad, he's gonna keep an eye on you. She's like the Old equivalent of like a, a nine-year-old, right. yeah, at best. Um, Nine-year-olds can know a lot. Yeah, they can. <laughs> That's why she's like kind of with it. I mean, at best. Especially I mean, nowadays. <laughs> relative ages are weird when it comes to we don't Longer have. Longer-lived yeah, species. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, uh, she is the youngest out of all of you. She was one that was born when um, you started tinkering with your master. Yep. Um, which was a couple years ago. Uh, and Well, she wasn't born, but she was like, coming up in age when yeah. you started started actually working in that field. To her point of view, I've been gone for Ever. three or four years. For her whole life. Yeah, yeah forever. Yeah. Um, 
every once in a while your head just would pop visits, up. But... Yeah. Uh, yeah, you guys fucking do. So, like I said, so I'm gonna give you advantage on the survival check to try to throw off and like your thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm just saying, I, I, we can. I'll, I'll try and help do that and stuff, depending on who can yeah. do it. Dirty twenty. You got it. You bonfired the body. You said yeah. correct. Okay. Mm-hmm. Which drops York also. Uh. Okay. And we burned, burned a body burned for you. Yeah. <laughs> I burned York. We burned two bodies. Used the soul, so, yeah. <laughs> I dropped my frenzy in a couple ways. So we're good. <laughs> so, is everybody rolling for the survival or no? Just because okay, this is his thing. That's why. What'd sorry. you get? 20. Dirty 20. Dirty 20? I'm sorry. Um, yeah, you feel pretty confident. Um, you, have an, you have an option. Knowing, <clears throat> knowing how good they are, I'm going to burn a flash of genius and make it a 25. Okay, um, you you feel really confident in what it is that you're doing, and then you have an epiphany and realize, oh shit, they're really good. They're blind. They don't track by yeah by footsteps. Why are we trying to cover our footsteps? That doesn't make any fucking sense. We have to make it so that we don't smell like anything. We have to make sure that the sound that we make isn't isn't like you know kept in the rocks like via like the breath of life and you start to you know press digitate the actually area around you um all, y'all are sweaty y'all start to make sure that the sweat that is dripping off of you that drops into there start to get picked up to leave no scent behind um you do things of uh, realizing that i start throwing thaumaturgy down other tunnels as we run by them you got it you also realize that, that doing the same <laughs> even the exhaust that comes out of conch has some sort of like magical residue that sits in the air that kind of like that smoke if, if i see him doing that like i'll be doing the prestidigitation too to you guys yeah stuff, you guys so. are doing your best to like clean up behind you and just like mm-hmm. make the pretty much pass without a trace with a, with a, a constantly <laughs> casting cantrips yeah is, is, is what you it's what you guys are trying to do um and you're you're doing a pretty good job, uh, w- especially with Zemdek's direction and being like, "Hey, we have to figure this out." Da 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 da. Um, I'm gonna ask you this: Where are you going? Back to going back to Steel the Bed. Yeah, the Ferris Archives. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will say this: unless somebody else, a bunch of party members interrupts me, casting a bunch of spells around them, traveling through the city is gonna. Uh, attract quite a bit of attention. Well, I mean, there's spells go off, and then you know things happen. But it, you, once we, you are extremely, <clears throat> you once will we be extremely cons- conspicuous yeah. by casting spells that are trying to make. We're you We're not gonna do it once we get yeah. to the. Uh, no, the I'm just spiral. letting you know, like yeah. that will the, meaning that once you enter the city, you will no longer. If you choose not to attract quite a bit of attention, you will not be able to cover your tracks anymore. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hey, uh, Zemdek, do you know a uh, perfume shop somewhere nearby? We could all... <clears throat> I pull out a bottle of perfume. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> That's right, you have. It was, this was supposed to be for my sister, but I think she'll... Like, Accept. Sh- she'll be all right with me okay. wasting it. Do you, do you know of any way we can make ourselves like a spectacle as we walk through town, too? Because that would maybe help hide some things that we're doing. But then they know. I think not being a spectacle is going to be better well there's there's two there's two schools of thought of that there's if you sneak too much you stand out from sneaking but if you're we we don't sneak at all we We just pretend like we belong belong there but you know if we i'm gonna gonna save you some time here i'm gonna save you some time here because um zemdek and and argus know a lot about this town and they know really what's going on i'm gonna i'm I'm trying to give you a little give you a little insight when it comes to this this town is already very busy a lot of magic a lot of tech going on all the time doing just a little bit of magic is fine not gonna really raise a whole lot of of eyebrows doing a consistent constant magic that makes it look like you are trying to not be found is going to make you far more conspicuous. Right. Like just being like, oh, I don't, I didn't forgot the shower today. What, press the dissertation. Or, to oh, I have to mend ground. this thing well, and, and or whatever. What That's I different. was trying to talk about was making a big distraction of what we're doing where people don't 
people okay. see us, but we're trying to avoid them again, seeing us doing the magical thing. Again, to that point, this is like New York City. If you if somebody just yells at you while you're walking down mm-hmm. New York City, pe- most people just fucking ignore you. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's not really something that's that. That's really goes that's on. that's the idea of what I was saying. Is make a big distraction where people just all like, oh, yeah. they're fucking jackasses. It's almost kind of works the other way around. Yeah, that's it. that's but where I was. There's trying definitely to... a fine line between that and becoming a disturbance, where the point where you attract the wrong type of attention. Right, that's what I was trying to talk to him about. Because the Crystal Brand are definitely going to be like, if you're being annoying disruptive. and disruptive, the Crystal Brand are going to be like, okay, you need to stop. What the fuck are you doing? Now we need to have a conversation. Right. Um, so, yes, there's definitely a fine line between that. I will say, if that's something that you're trying to do, it is going to take it is going to take more energy than it, unless you guys want to just book it to the fucking archives. It's up to you. Once we get into the city, I want to like just merge yep. with the crowd. Be mm-hmm. a normal. Okay, you want an Assassin's Creed um, citizen, like yep. hide in plain sight kind of deal. Mm-hmm. You got it. Easily enough, even with Conk, this is the perfect fucking town right. to be doing that. Yeah. Um, all of you blend in extremely well. This is like the one town you will blend in. <laughs> that and probably the Protectorate would be like the the the, one, the two towns that would blend in the best. I would say maybe Tule as well. Um, Solis, there's no need to blend in because nobody fucking cares. Um, so It's uh, Vegas, I mean. Yeah, it's Vegas. Uh, so, yeah, you can do that. Here's what I'll do. I'm going to give you uh, so all, everybody roll stealth so checks at it advantage because if that's what you decide to do um and you are you making a beeline to the ferris archives yeah. okay uh, child small child yeah i think we would Five. bounty advantage. hunter sticking out mm-hmm. uh dirty 20 dirty 20 17 17 22. 22. 14. 14, okay. 15. 15. All y'all do really well. As Eliezer, I think you stick out the most because I think you're watching the rear and you're walking backwards up the whole mm-hmm. um, spire, of uh, the, the whole corkscrew. You're a little paranoid because you just experienced what's going on here and your bounty hunter instincts are, are kicking in a little bit more than the rest of it. Your um, a fight or flight is kind of, the survival instinct is kicking in where I'm being like, there's no way I'm being caught off guard by these people. That's mm-hmm. not happening. Even if I look a little conspicuous, I'm fine with with it. So you just always have your hand on your sword, which is, it's actually it's not too conspicuous as far as it, it looks. You get a couple glances, but it's mostly just you look you're like a guard paranoid. who's a little paranoid. You look like a bodyguard who's guarding <laughs> some people, and you just look a little paranoid. Right. You also look to some people like, oh, they could snap at any moment and just be weird about it. Uh, <laughs> um, so that so that's the other kind of attention you get. But not, uh, you don't, I don't think you get any attention from the actual authorities. The, the fact that the rest of them seem to be walking and moving as though they know what they're doing gives you the air of, oh, that's just their bodyguard. Um, so you guys move. For Just to save you guys some time, you make it to the Far Ives with far, Ferris Archives with little to no incident. Um, you can go within, you can go to the inner chamber, you can make it to the glyph of transportation. Um, there is a cost of using said person because they have someone on call that is able to send you to certain places uh, um, that they know Pinjack are able gave to send us a them. giant purse of gold. They did. Do you know how much is in that gold? A thousand. A thousand gold. They, it, it costs you 600 gold to be sent from one place to another. Um, so you're going to spend 600 of that thousand in order to get there. Yep. It is a pretty penny. Only rich people do it. So, and at the moment, you are temporarily rich. So, um, we, we really are. Easily. So, so here's what happens. Easily. I'm, I'm not even going to RP it too much. Is that you hand over the gold? Unless you guys are trying to haggle or anything like that. Nope. You're done. No. Nope. Pin Jack's money. Okay. Uh, the same. They will try to take your information. Oh, we just need to record your information for our records. Make sure we have a transportation uh, all set down. Um, can I get all your names, please? Uh, your your uh, the, the, the Asian college origin. asks that you let us pass. <clears throat> As does the Council of Steercrag, and I pull out the the other one too. Have a lovely time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so much actual paperwork, don't you? Just, yeah, that was just ridiculous. Um, so. Uh, you guys go in, no records, you just <laughs> as you travel through <laughs> end up in the uh, ooh, actually, where are you going? Because they only know certain places and guess what? Um, the Fang Glyph is not one of them. She might try to I've take got, over? I mean, I don't know how to do the actual spell, but I can show you the, the rune. Roll a persuasion check. 
How am I supposed to know where this goes? Uh, do you have the authority? She's to use really it? smart. She knows what she's talking about. You can roll it at advantage if you like, or you can roll your own persuasion check. Yeah, yeah, let, yeah. Let me... <laughs> <laughs> okay, twenty-one. Twenty-one. Much better than my nine. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's bardic it's, stuff. Uh, just, just try to give the most like friendly you know, smile. But it would, if you could, kind of send the message off that way, you know, back to your whoever you answer to. It'd be really great if we got some sort of you know booklet or pamphlet or just some sort of information of the things that you know that you know as a bard that we are allowed to send you to because without some sort of prior authorization, this just so much paperwork for us because then we have to fill up so many boxes of unknown, unknown, and then we get asked the question, why is this unknown? And we're like, well, we couldn't do it because of this. And then that has to go up so many ladders and then uh, uh, I, have, platinum I get paid commission away? per how many times I do this, right? No, and I don't get paid until the paperwork uh, is done. Do you know how long it takes to file an unknown transportation? Two months it takes to file. How long does it take with a platinum? Especially if you don't do the paperwork for it with... Shh. The platinum. That you get to keep yourself. You don't have to tell them you got it. There never was. I think that goes it sounds like you're having a sick day. Yeah. Sounds like nobody came by here today. I mean, well, I mean, there's also overhead and the cost of me waiting. You know, like. How I, about another platinum to add to it? Seems fair to me. Well. We were never know. here. You never sent us. I just, um. Go and enjoy yourself. And just uh, cast the spell, and you guys <laughs> takes the two platinum from you. And do you want me? To, I'll take one of mine. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I, I've been giving away platinum like gold today. So <laughs> I love how you guys just you're like here. We'll just buy your side. Just grease in the wheels. You know. also that's how this town works. I mean, the Tokrins run this town. Oh um, yeah, because, we've, we've met Tokrins. We <laughs> and the reason why is because the Tokrins have such a immediate access to what creates the wealth. They, they create the mines that make the gold, make the platinum. Not it's, and I, don't, I want to make it clear, like, it's not that they're greedy, it's just that they have That's what they, got. they have the monopolized Almost access to what creates the thing. Well, no, and so no, they get to control the wealth of the rest of the world. That's, that's why Cole keeps like just offering people money sure. to like pretend we're not here, because, mm -hmm. hey, you don't have to let Tokrin know we gave this to you. Um, so, boom. You guys are back. Uh, they use your uh, teleportation circle that um, that Armon spat onto your book, and you are back in the Fang. Now I want to do a couple things here. That is technically for this session where your story ends. Okay. Okay. But I want to talk about a couple other things about what's happening somewhere else because previously when we dealt with a Torquen and Rai, we had another person that was an NPC that gave you a little bit another uh, kind of viewpoint as to what's going on. Um, I want to give you a bit of an insight, like post credit scene as to what happens. For your characters, this is meta knowledge, but it's mm -hmm. also very necessary for you to understand as far as the perspective as to what's going on here uh, because this is something else that does very much affect what's happening. So... Um, And I, I also want to make it known that it's not out of the realm of imagination for you to have an idea that this kind of thing probably happened. You already knew from how Eliezer felt and how Zemdak felt and the rest of you felt. It was like, we need to get the fuck out of here because there's no way people aren't going to try. The rest of them aren't going to try and collect these if they felt two of them go off mm -hmm. at the same time. That's never happened. As far as uh, when it comes to you guys, you've only ever done one at a time. The other ones have been teleported away, but never at, at one time have two gone down and not come back. That's a big deal. That's a big red that's, flag. To that's them. a huge red flag. That's when like multiple Dorkan and Rai get involved, and you're talking about that's, that's when the like near the full force of that. Agents kind yeah. of thing. Exactly. That's when like James Bond gets fucking called, and we're like, <laughs> okay, we've got to do some shit. Uh, so you needed to get the fuck out of there, and you knew that you needed to get the fuck out of there. So, camera goes back to the smoldering ruins of this town. Um, it's slowly moving through as the flame kind of flares the lens. And continues to move. You hear as seven individuals 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I did it right. As seven <laughs> individuals phase into reality and just like bam, apparate into existence, all anywhere between nine and eleven feet tall, all different colored armors, um, as they immediately start to just comb the area, completely ignoring the actual destruction and only looking for what it is they're looking for. Um, you, the camera kind of moves and backs off and gets a bit of a more of an angle, so you can see them all sprawl out. You hear one stop, uh, come around the corner, stop her back, turn to where Tiffany was here because they don't need to look; they just feel. Two others come. They look furious. One reaches down, pulls up like charcoal and ash. Doctor. Um, you hear another bam. And you see it like a hobbling individual that's kind of pulled up to one side. Not a door cannon, right? individual. Looks like some experimentation that's been done on themselves. They appear to have an extra arm that kind of wraps around them. Um, eyes hidden behind a mask. Uh, some sort of lump on the back that seems to be hidden by some sort of large piece of canvas that they're moving forward with. Um, uh, I'm sorry, not a he. She. Uh, hard to tell in this light that, he, uh, that kind of walks forward, hobbles forward. We, um, we can. Other bits that we can pull. They can put her in one of the chambers. We'll try. Wonderful. This, this one, this one is. Interesting. I'd like to see what made this one. At the very least, a good snack. But he. Who? Who are you preserved in glass? As they walk up and start to gracefully touch the terrazine that is around the frozen emerus of that form. And you see the terrazine start to spread on their hand. Ooh. <laughs> Delicious. So interesting. Do we have any more of these? We'll try, Doctor. Do we know their name? No, Doctor. Pity. Well, it appears we have much more work to do, my children. We'll consider this chapter closed for now. And that's where we're going to end. Thank you guys for sticking with us. Um, as always, stay safe out there. Uh, check out the Patreon. Check out all of uh, the artists that we of the music we use. Make sure that you give them um, some some thanks. Listen to the music. Buy their albums. Uh, check out our Patreon so you can get access to our post session talks, our Discord channel, a bunch of other stuff. Check out our print shop where we can print you out some cool three D prints for your games, mm -hmm. and. Subscribe to our Twitch, TikTok, Facebook, all that Facebook, good nonsense. YouTube, you got, like you us if idea. you can, whatever you can do. And for those of you who are like subscribed, subscribe. yeah, yeah. Um, feed the algorithm. Stay, <laughs> well, we won't be streaming it live here, but make it stay, uh, stay, keep your eyes peeled for this episode's post session talk. It's a bunch, bunch of juicy, juicy bits. Juicy bits. So mm -hmm. that's it for us. Bye. Stay safe. Bye, guys. Bye guys. Bye.